Russell Potter here, Motivo Academy. And in this video, the final video in the series, we're gonna go through step-by-step -step how to do a face-to-face -face performance review with your employee, a killer performance review with your employee. So let's get into it. So there are seven steps. We're gonna count down seven steps, one at a time, on how you can do a killer performance review face-to-face -face in person with your employee. Now you need to have prepared for this, so go back and see the video number two in the series on how to do uh, performance review preparation. You should have done that prep already, so if you hadn't done that already, go back and watch that video. Um, and also, if you haven't seen the first video in the series, I really recommend that. Um, about the types of performance reviews and why they're important. And that will kind of guide what you say in the performance review meeting. So let's go into the seven steps, starting with step one. Okay, so step one is just to create a really good, safe, psychologically safe environment and set the tone for the meeting. So they're gonna come in, or if it's on uh, some kind of video, uh, video call, then you're gonna come in, what you really wanna do is a little bit of small talk, set the tone, uh, make it nice and relaxed. So how are you doing today? How's the week going so far? A Little bit of small talk, relax. You have to be relaxed, they're gonna mirror your body language. You don't wanna be slumped back in your chair. You don't wanna be really far forward, nice neutral position, like a coaching pose, neutral position. Set the tone really well. And the question that you want to ask quite early on after, you know, how you're doing today and how's your week going is, well, let's start the performance review. Just the, let's just start by telling, tell me how you think it's gone in the past three months, six months, or however long that last period was. How do you think things are going? It's an open question that it invites dialogue because the performance review is the two-way conversation where you are agreeing, you are co-creating a way forward for the next three, six, and 12 months. So because you're co-creating this and you want that person to be inspired, remember only 18% of people leave a performance review inspired according to Gallup, it's good data. You want them to leave inspired, aligned with what you want and committed to the strategy, the customer and the business. So of course, it's gonna to need to be a two-way dialogue. You wanna get them talking to so start with a question around how do you think it's gone in the past few months? So you got that step out of the way. Step number two is you really wanna start now the formal part of the review. Now you've prepared, this stuff should be down on paper. You may have shared that review with them beforehand to go through so it's no surprises, but essentially you're gonna be going through the formal document, the formal performance review of performance appraisal. So then you would just want to say, okay, so I, I hear how it's gone. So why don't we go through the performance review now and step by step, and we can come to a few of those points that you just raised as we go through this formal review. So once again, thank you for sharing your feedback on how it's gone. It's uh, let's maybe start the formal review. It'd be a good opportunity to start the formal review Let's go through some of the comments and some of the, uh, the things on the formal review now, step by step. And then you're formally, officially saying, okay, so now we're gonna focus on some facts. So that's your opinion, thank you very much for that. We now have a dialogue. Let's go through some of the facts of the past few months. So that's what you'd wanna say. And the first thing that you want to go to on the performance review, which is usually sequential, on the, uh, on the document. If you don't have the document, Motivo Academy, dig out the resources, treasure hunt over there. There's loads of great stuff over there. Um, and you'll find a, a form that you can use for a performance review PDF. You can use for a performance review. And the first thing on the list is the objectives from the last performance review. What did you ask them to achieve in that last formal review? Now remember, for some companies, those objectives are gonna be linked to bonus payments. Now. Actually, in best practice, they shouldn't. You shouldn't really link performance reviews with pay uh, because that diminishes the chance that the performance review will be honest. Um, and some narcissistic managers might actually give a bad performance review to 
just piss off an employee basically so they don't get their full bonus. But uh, very often the objectives, if they are set in a specific, they're measurable, there are specific key performance indicators or revenue targets or whatever it might be linked to the bonus, um, then it's very important that you go through the objectives at the meeting. But even if that uh, bonus is not linked to pay, you must go through the objectives for the last period. What did they agree to do? What did you both agree to do in the past three months, six months, 12 months, however, whatever that period was? And it's really important you start with that. So first thing you're gonna say in this part of the performance review is, let's just review the objectives and how you did against those objectives from the last review, because it's documented. And then you're gonna go through each of those objectives. So you agreed that you would um, deliver a training course to our uh, new salespeople for onboarding uh, and that you would deliver that by April and that roll that out and train our employees from, uh, from the 1st of April who join the sales team, you would do that onboarding. Let's see, if, how did that go? And then you know. You, 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 in the two-way discussion, and obviously with the preparation, you would know whether that was done. And if it wasn't done, that's the opportunity to say, well, you committed to doing this. What's the reason that that didn't happen? What's the reason? Now you're trying to get some dialogue out. You'll hear a, a bunch of excuses if it wasn't done. And if it was done, it's your opportunity to give suggestion, praise, feedback. Yeah, I, I was really impressed actually by that. I think it was really good. It's been really well received. Look, I got some comments from, as part of the appraisal, 360 degree appraisal, from the uh, director of sales. I got some comments from some of the participants and the feedback is that it was really good and uh, they really enjoyed it. Things that can be improved maybe is this, this and this, um, but overall the experience is fantastic, well done. So then you're giving full feedback on the objective. Was it done? Was it not done? What was good? What could be improved? How do we evolve the, uh, the uh, deliverable? So this is important. So you're going to start in this, this section after you've got through the pleasantries. And how's it gone over the past few months? Now you're getting into the objectives, the goals that were set previously. And this is obviously going to be a very important part of that conversation which is why we really start with that because it really it's what, probably the most important bit on the whole thing. Accountability and results matter. Okay, so step number three is really to follow the sequence of the form because it gives a nice structure to the conversation. We're not winging it here. We're going through point by point on the form and you'll see on the form usually the next part is about the uh, performance criteria that have been rated either with a rating system or with comments or whatever it might be on your system whatever you use but essentially we're going to go through the comments and usually and uh, certainly on the form that we have over at the academy it's just going to start with job performance against the uh, performance against the job description tasks because the job description again is extremely important some people might feel they're outdated but they're really not if you're an entrepreneur everyone in your company must have a job description and it can be quite uh, a broad job description it doesn't have to be really really you know micromanaging but um, it needs there needs to be job description it's quite important so you're going to want to go through the comments on that section about performance of the job description and it's just very simple you say okay so let's look at the first area of performance so my feedback is ba 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 and I got some feedback from other stakeholders and they felt ba 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 and that you said that your feedback was this. So how do you feel about that? Do you think that's fair? Do you think that's accurate? What's your feelings about that? What's your thoughts about that? So you're starting a dialogue. Now you're not getting into a big rant. You're not dominating the dialogue. You want to feedback objectively, comment by comment by comment. And you're trying to understand from their perspective, do they understand it? Do they get what's been said? 
How is this going to affect their performance moving forwards? Is this going to get me an improvement in performance? Um, is this going to improve their motivation? Or is there something that we can learn here and improve so that moving forwards we're better off? So again, you want to go through point by point. So my feedback is, but, 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 but. The feedback of other stakeholders is, da, 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 da. We spoke to some customers and this is their feedback, da, 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 da. And then what's, and your feedback was this. This is what you put on the form if it's 360 or 180 degree appraisal. And then, so it seems pretty comprehensive. What's your, what's your thoughts and feelings on this? And then let them answer. Zip it. Let them answer. You really, really want to see how they're responding to this. You really want to observe it. You want to see how they're responding to this. So that's the next part on the, uh, the next step rather in this conversation. And really what you're going to do is just work through each of those sections in that same way. You're going to read it out, say what you thought, your comments, comments from the other people that have commented if it's 360 degree appraisal, and then what they thought, and then a dialogue. And you're really listening. You should be listening 80%. They, sorry, they should be talking 80%. You should be, you should be listening that time. You should be talking only 20% of the time. You really want to make sure that they, they really have understood what you have said at this, at this stage in the conversation. Okay, step number four is that you want to go through the KPIs and the absence staff. You don't have to labor this one particularly, definitely the absence one, unless there's an issue that should have been taken care of outside of this. You say absence, so you've taken X number of days off in the past few, uh, few months. Um, and if you think it's a little untoward, like it's three or four days taken off in three months, is, is everything okay? How are you feeling? Is there anything at work or at home that might be leading to this? So you can ask a few probing questions here. The objective is to number one, let them know that you've noticed. That's very important. One of the objectives of the appraisal is to make sure that these things have a hard stop and that they are being monitored because what gets monitored improves. So you wanna go through that stuff there. Two-way dialogue, if there's something to bring up, you can discuss it. And then you want to go through the KPI data. And the KPI data, you want to spend much more time on that one. So if you have managed to get KPI data, key performance indicators that we talk about in the preparation video, video number two of this series, series go back there, check that one out. Uh, link in the description below. But uh, if you're talking about KPI data, which you really, really should be doing, this is where you want to have the discussion around that to say, okay, KPI data shows that this was your performance on this process in the period in the past few periods. The target was this, and your performance against it was that. All KPIs have a target. So your performance against it was that. How do you think you did against KPI target, and how can we improve this in the next period? Have a dialogue. I can tell you that all KPIs have four determinants of their performance success. KPIs being the measure of the process performance. There are four reasons why process performance can drop and KPIs can drop and go up. Number one is the system design, like how those processes fit in. Number two is the capacity of the people to operate that system and process. Do they have enough man hours to do it? Are there enough people? Number three, is expertise. Can they do it? Do they have the skills to do it? And number four is their motivation. Do they want to do it? Is it motivational? Some work is just not motivational, you know, but uh, do they want to do it? And it's those things. So in that part of the discussion, you want to explore those variables. Now, generally speaking, when I've done performance review, uh, sorry, a KPI workshops, with companies where we look at the KPIs as a team and I say, look, guys, this is your KPIs. No blame at all. I'll give you anything you want. How will you improve those KPIs? How will you improve the room turnaround rate in a hotel, for example? How will you, rooms division people, how will you improve that room turnaround rate after check-in? How will you get that down from an average of three hours down to an average of you know something better 
and you never set the target at that point. And you say, I'll give you anything you want. How would you do that? And then they have a discussion and they come up with brilliant ideas that nobody would ever have thought of. And then I say, okay, set the target yourself. How fast can you go? And they'll say, oh, we could do that in 30 minutes, which is of course unrealistic. But you can see that they're suddenly committed. Once they, once they understand the possibilities, once they understand in their mind how they might be able to improve the performance of that system and process, they come up with great ideas because it's their ideas, you get the commitment, that's how you want to do it. So at this part in the discussion where you're talking about KPIs, what you want to say is, this is as far as you go. If I give you anything you want, how would you improve those KPIs? So go through those four things. Um, but again, bring up the KPI. I give you anything you want. How would you improve that KPI? Go through those four variables and then ask them, please set yourself a KPI for the next three months, six months, whatever the period may be you'll find that they always choose a KPI that's much higher than you expect once they can visualize the possibilities. So that's how to go through at this step in the performance review, the KPI stuff. You can see it's pretty powerful. So if you can get KPI data, I thoroughly recommend doing it and going through it at this stage in the face-to-face -face part of the performance review process. Okay, so in the next step in the performance review process, you're gonna to wanna to talk about the goals that you have for your business unit, for your department, or if you're the business owner, for the whole business. Now, what you should have definitely done before the performance review is liaise with senior stakeholders to really understand the vision, direction, and strategy for the whole business. If you're a new manager, you're a junior manager, mid-level manager, you may actually not know what the overall strategy for the business is. You may know what your department strategy is, as given to you by a director or someone, um, but you may not know the overall direction for the company. But actually, it's extremely important that you know what the CEO, the president, the owner, the founder has as an objective for the business and their expectations of your division and your department so once you know that, once you understand, you know, what the input is from those senior stakeholders, then they're going to know a lot more things about the environment, you know, the, the external, the OT from the SWAT, opportunities and threats from the SWAT, SWAT, not squat, the um, opportunities and threats from the environment, then you can then express in the performance review at this stage, in this step in the meeting, the business's goals and objectives are the president has told me that he wants us to do this as an objective in the next few months. She wants us to achieve this goal in the next few months. And here's why. And this is because it's linked to this customer uh, experience or it's linked to um, whatever the goal is to do with a vision and direction, remember. Then you have this opportunity in the performance appraisal to a performance review to express and align the person, the employee, with the business. If they feel part, this is the essence of employee engagement, by the way. If they feel that they understand why they are critical to the success of the business, they're well aligned with the goals of the business, the overall strategy, that their performance matters, even if they clean toilets for, for their job in a hotel, they have to understand that cleanliness and hygiene is a critically important part of the guest experience and that they mention it on booking.com reviews and booking.com reviews drive occupancy of the hotel. So actually you, Mr. Cleaner, Mrs. Cleaner of the bathroom, your role in this business is business critical. So at this stage in the performance review, you really want to create that alignment and share your goals and objectives for discussion with the employee. So you typically would say that is, the president has said that this is really important for the company. Our goals and objectives is given to us by him and my goal and objective for this department is X, Y, and Z. These are the things that 
I set as goals for the department. What you then want to do is ask them. You're not going to give them instructions yet. What do you think about that? Right? What do you think about this? We're going to use Otto Sharma's Theory U for co-creating change. Very, very effective indeed. If you haven't read Otto Sharma's book, Theory U, go and read it. Go and get it on Amazon right now. But uh, you want to ask them, once you've shared the goals and objectives for the organization and for the department, your goals and objectives, president's goals and objectives, and so on, what do you think about that? Get some feedback. The purpose is, is that you're going to try to create commitment, just as you did with the KPI thing. You're trying to create commitment here. So hear what they think. And they're probably going to say, well, I don't think that's possible. I think that's a problem. I don't think the customer is going to like this. You want to get all of these objectives out now, not when they leave the room to go and sabotage the effort. This is your opportunity to have a great quality discussion and get their commitment. Listen to what those objectives are. Don't put those objectives down. Don't try to counter argue them just yet. So you want to say, what do you think about that? You're going to get some resistance without a doubt. And so, okay, so, so I hear you. So how does this, how do these goals and objectives make you feel? Do they make you feel, feel level? Do they make you feel inspired? Do they make you worried? Are you worried about this? Listen, zip it, listen. What do they say? So you've got the thinking level. Now you're getting down to the feeling level. How do they feel? And then they're starting to say, well, I'm a bit scared about that. I'm a bit worried about that. What's the reason? Again, you're not countering here. You're not saying, well, you shouldn't feel like that because X, Y, and Z. That's just denying their feeling. That's just never going to get you anywhere. You're trying to co-create the change here. So at this part of the performance review conversation, this is about how do you think about the vision, goals, objectives that I've just laid out. How do you feel about it? Does this scare you? Does this worry you a little bit? What's the reason? Okay, I can understand that. Okay. What do you believe will happen? And this is the bottom level. What do you believe will happen if we do this? And zip it. What do you believe will happen if we pursue this goal and objective? Now you're getting down to the beliefs level and they might say, honestly, I believe that we'll really struggle and I'll work really late hours. Got it. Now you're there. Now you know where that objective came from, right? Now you see where the resistance is going to come. Okay, so that's when you can start to co-create. This is coming out the other side of the U-curve. So then you would want to say at this part in the conversation, okay, so I understand that you're worried about um, staying late. You know, I can really appreciate that. And I know you've got a family. I don't want that to happen. How can we together achieve the goal and not have you stay really late. What do I need to do for you? You're going servant leadership here. What do I need to do for you to make sure that doesn't happen? We have to achieve the objective and I hear your concerns and I share your concerns and I don't want that to happen. What do I need to do to make sure that doesn't happen? Now you're co-creating, let them answer. And they, they will turn around and say, well, actually, you know, if we can adjust it like this, or if we can change this system and process, or if I can change my job description, or if I can, you're going to get some great ideas from them. Now they're co-creating. And if you say, well, I can commit to this, this, and this, if you can achieve that objective and do that, that, and that, then we have a way forward for the next three, six months. This is how you get from goal and objective and objection through to commitment and change. Otto Sharma's theory you, I've used it extensively, hundreds and hundreds of times in workshops to get people who don't want to change to commit to changes that essentially they control. That feeling of control is really important. So at this stage, we're talking, we're trying to get commitment to your goals and objectives. Now, what do you think would happen if you just start to set the goals and objectives in a command and control way? It's probably not going to happen. They'll probably struggle, be unhappy, maybe resign, uh, maybe sabotage. Sabotage is much more common than you think. Make sure that your goals and objectives don't work. But if you co-create that in this meeting, using that, those steps, using those words, then you will get exactly what you want. 
So that's why it's important at this stage that you talk about the goals and objectives and expectations, but that you co-create a way to get it. So that's a really, really, really important step. Quite a lot of talking from me. So let's move on to the next step. Let's end this performance review meeting on a high. The last step that I want you to do is to leave your employee feeling inspired and motivated. Remember, only 80% of people leave a performance review inspired and motivated. If you've gone through the steps really well, then I think you were done an excellent performance review. They will be inspired and motivated. But there is something you can do at the end is to end on a high that will really, really set you apart as a manager. Now, if you go to the Motivo Academy, we have the personal canvas exercise over there. And this borrows from our personal canvas exercise. There's a link in the description below to the course. You can pick it up for next to nothing, but you want to nail this one because this will really be transformative and it'll make you feel good too. I want you to ask the employee as the last question. I want you, during your time with us, to have got closer to your life goals. I don't want you to just come to work and then that's it. I know that you have life goals in your life, things that you want to achieve. What would you like to achieve in the, in your, as a life goal and how can we get closer to that in the next three months or six months or however long the appraisal process is going to be for you? And what I mean by that is that every person has a life goal. It might be, I want my children to go to a top university, or I want my children to be just really happy in their lives, or I want to start my own business one day. These are all real questions that I get from coaching and from that personal canvas exercise that we've done hundreds of times with, uh, with employees and teams for their managers. So ask them, what are your life goals? You can, diet, you can use a bit of, um, uh, of your own, uh, share your own life goals to get the ball rolling. My life goal is actually to own my own business one day. So ask them, what are your life goals? They'll answer. What can we do this three months or six months to get you closer to those life goals? How can I support you? How can the business support you? Ask them. They might say, as a life goal, I'd like to own a business myself one day. And you might say, well, okay. And owning a business one day, you'll need to learn bookkeeping. You'll need to learn accounting. Is that something that you'd like to get exposure to at the business in this next three months or six months? And if that's possible, then you commit as their manager who's helping them in their growth journey in their life to go away and try and get them some exposure to that. Maybe it could be as some companies do have a training budget for these kind of uh, training exercise of, for uh, performance improvement. So it could be, okay, so you go do an online course on bookkeeping, we'll reimburse the cost for you. So you can see, think creatively about how you can support the life goals of the person in your team. This makes you a trusted leader. This makes you as a, a, a real uh, partner for them in their life, in their life success. Not just a boss, not just a manager, but a trusted partner in their success in life. Now, if you can end your performance review on that kind of high, you're gonna get the commitment you've always dreamed of. That person is gonna see their future uh, with the company, they're gonna commit, and they're gonna give their very, very best to you. So I hope that helps. These are the steps for performance review conversation if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a new manager, if you are a manager of people, you want to get this right. It's transformative for your business. It's extremely important. And it's actually, I think you can imagine, if you could do a performance review step by step like that, I think you'll be feeling great. And I think they will be too. Very rewarding. Like, subscribe, it means a lot to us. There's a lot of great inf uh, information like this stuff in this video and in this series of videos that I've got to share with you over the next few months. And you don't want to miss a thing. Hit subscribe. Head over to the Motivo Academy. It's a, uh, a coupon down below just for subscribers, only for subscribers. Coupon down below. We have sales, countdown sales periodically. You can pick up a, co a course for as little as 20 bucks when there's a countdown sale on. Uh, head over there. Learn everything you need to learn. Master this part of your career of people management so you can move on and do great things in your life and career. 
and be transformational to the world. You can do this, you've got it in you because we at the Motivo Academy help good people do great things. Thanks for watching. Thank you.